Statistics and Excel Birthday Probability Game Example Get ready and some coffee because if we want to get futuristic we need statistics and Excel because statistics is the only way we can even get some kind of idea of what might possibly happen in the if someone tries to tell you the future without using statistics you just you just walk away man you just walk away because that's not how you do it you can't you can't do it without the data and data is what we do here. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access to- First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. There's three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We're gonna construct this from a blank worksheet practicing our Excel tools as we go. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going, what we will be doing. We're looking at probability as a more specific area within statistics. As we do so, we're often thinking about games of chance, which again, some people really like. Some people, it kind of turns them off because it seems like kind of a trick or something that's related to gambling or something like that. But remember, that these types of games are basically probability distilled down to a game. That's why they're really good tools to practice probability with. Once we have the concept of probability, we can apply them to the broader statistics concepts in many different types of applications. So we're thinking here about a birthday scenario. If you have a room of 50 people or more, possibly less than that would still work, but we're gonna use a room of 50 people thinking about the probability that at least two of those people have the same birth date. Not talking about the year, just talking about the day of the year, which most people's intuition would tell them is not very likely to happen because we have you know 365 days and only really a relatively small amount of people compared to that the 50 people in the room and of course the trick here the magic is that our intuition is incorrect which is often the case in many kind of scenarios where we're thinking about probability where our intuition actually leads us astray it's not quite uh, correct we have to be able to understand that for multiple different reasons because one that means it's an area where people can trick us, right? Because our intuition is going to be off, which means that people can kind of mislead us with that, which means that when we, when we make decisions related to kind of probability and whatnot, we might want to take a more formal approach, especially if it's going to be a large uh, type of decision. And when we're testing things out, then of course we can use the tools that we might use in a problem like this, to figure out other things related to probability and or statistics in general. Now, when we think about 50 people in a room and whether or not they have the same birthday, that could be a little bit complicated. So we're gonna start with a more simple problem, learn the concept and then apply it to the larger problem, a tool or a technique often used and often useful in mathematical problems as well as any kind of like an engineering kind of system doesn't work in every system of course because sometimes you have a system where the you know the sum of the total is more than the parts and so on and so forth but for many mechanical types of problems and math problems that's going to be a great approach to use so we're going to start with a dice situation where we have three die 
and we're trying to determine uh, what the likelihood is that uh, two or more of the dice will have the same number if we throw the three die of red, yellow, and green. We'll then use those concepts to apply to the birthday scenario. And of course, we'll also try to use Excel here to give us some empirical calculations using our random calculations to see whether or not the results we come up with make sense from our kind of like empirical testing with Excel. All right, so let's go to the practice tab. This is going to have some pre-formatted cells so you can work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we will be working. Let's set up our worksheet as we do every time. I'm going to hold down control, scroll in a bit. And so you can see down here that I'm at like 190%. I'm going to then uh, click on the worksheet on the triangle, right click like we do every time format the cells. I like to start with that baseline formatting currency, bracketed numbers and red, no dollar signs. And I'm not going to start with any decimals either. And okay. And then I'll typically go to the home tab font group and make it bold. That is something that I do for my screencasting. You might not want to do that yourself unless you like to have it bold all the time, right? But I think it works better for screencasting. Okay, let's start with our dice scenario. So let's imagine we have three dice. Let's color them different colors to make it a little bit uh, more clear possibly to visualize. So we have a red, yellow, and a green die. Obviously they have six sides to each of them. So the outcomes two, three, four, five, six is six for each dice. I can say, let's do the same thing by saying equals to that one. And then I'll go over here and say equals that one and select these two, put my cursor on the fill handle, double click on it, copying that down. So there's our dice. If we roll the dice, they are independent, which is a key concept, right? Each dice is independent from the other die and they all have a one six chance to roll any particular number on the die, such as one die has a one six chance to one, roll a four. The other die also has a one six chance to roll a four and so on. They're not related, uh, they're independent. All right, let's go ahead and select these items. Uh, the headers, home tab, font group. Let's make the bucket drop down black and white. Let's put some borders around it, selecting these items and go to the home tab font group, borderize it. And then with our bucket drop down, I like to make it blue for our data input. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors, standard wheel. And then we go to the wheel right here. There's the blue closing it up. And then let's make the header centered home tab alignment center. And then I'll select these and make them as small as I can by double clicking in the middle, uh, reducing the size to as little as we can have. All right. So we're trying to say, okay, what's the likelihood that two of these uh, items match? Now it might be easier for us to actually approach this by saying, well, let's first ask what's the likelihood that none of them match? And if I figure the likelihood that none of the three dice match, then the likelihood that they match will be 100% minus that amount. So we're kind of backing into it because it's a little bit easier for us to contemplate. And, and uh, that's going to be, again, one of the tools that we'll kind of use. So let me map this out and then we'll discuss it. So I'm going to make a skinny D here, putting my cursor between the D and the E, make a skinny D. And then we're going to say, let's say that we have three dice with two matching, matching. I think that's how you spell matching. Let's just say numbers. That's what we're trying to find. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, if I roll the first die and it comes out to like a four, for example, let's say the red die comes out to a four, then it, it, it can be anything, right? The, it could be whatever. And then the, I'm going to think about the second dice as though it's independent. Like if I rolled them one at a time, the red, then the yellow, then the green, that's one way you can visualize it. Although I'm going to, you can roll them all at the same time. Let's take the red die as our starting point. If it's a four, then, then what happens on the second die, second, uh, dice or second roll, right? That you could think about it. And what about the third, the third dice or the third roll? So on the second dice, what's the likelihood that it's 
going to be a four, it would be one out of six that it could be a four. Or you can think about the inverse. That means that it'd be six minus one or one, two, three, four, five, five out of six that it doesn't match that four. So let's imagine the second one we'd roll is like a two. So we had a yellow two. And we're going to say, okay, what about the third die then? What's the likelihood that it's going to be matching either of those, the four or the two? Well, it's going to be a likelihood of, of two uh, out of six that it would hit those. That means to not hit it, it would be six minus two or one, two, three, four. You know, I have four numbers that it can hit out of the six where it's not going to be one of those. And let's say that we do that and it ends up to be like a six. So let's say that's the case. So that's gonna be the, so let's take now the product multiplying these out. So we have our fractions. So this is gonna be, I can do it this way equals this times this, or I can use my product function equals the product multiplying instead of adding it's not the sum but the product of those two and i can take equals the product tab of these two so it'd be 20 over 36 which i could reduce or let's just convert it to a percent so i'm going to say this will be 20 uh, over 36 let's percentify that to recognize home tab number group percentify adding some decimals uh there we have it we can also uh, do it this way. We could say this is going to be equal to five divided by six. Five sixths is going to be equal to percentified to recognize. Let's add some decimals. So 83.33% that the second dice doesn't match the first one. And then the next die, we have a four out of six, 66.67, that it doesn't match either of the other two, which comes out to a total of the 55.56, which is once again, dividing these out, or I can take the product equals the product, whoops, equals the product of these two, multiplying them together. Once again, just to double check, you get the 56, 55, 56. Now, if, if that's correct, if that were the likelihood that they don't uh, that, 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 that none of them match, we can subtract. Well, the only other option is that at least two of them do match. So I can say less 100% or one. Let's percentify that, percentify adding decimals. And that kind of gives us the odds of matching numbers is going to be equal to 100 minus 55. And that's going to be home tab number group percentify add some decimals the 44.44 so we're going to say the the odds of rolling three dice two at least two of them matching must be 44 percent because the odds of rolling three dice and having none of them match is 55.56 percent so you can see like the logic there now notice that i kind of backed into this number i would like to be able to not back into it and calculate that number and see and have it have it be the inverse of the 55 56 but it's a little bit tricky to do it that way so in other words let me show you what i mean if i select these and go to the home tab font group black white and let's make this these centered so we'll center them let's select these items home tab font group border it and then put our blue around it all right, let's 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 copy this idea and say, what if we had three dice with, uh, with two matches? With, well, I could just, co let's just copy this whole bit up top. Copy it down to like here. I'll just copy that, that's easier. Okay, so then I can say, okay, well, if I roll the first die and it's a four, then the second dice that I roll, I, you would think I have a one six chance to match the four, right? And then, and then the next dice that I roll, so, so you would think that if it didn't match, right? If it was a four and then a two, then what's the likelihood that it's going, that, that the next roll would match? Well, I would have now a two 
uh, a two sixth chance that this one either hits a two or a four. So you would think that this would be two sixth. So if I look at that, I would say, okay, I would think it would be one six, two six, two, two, 30, two over 36 if I take the product and that comes out to the 5.56. And I can do it this way, dividing them out and the 5.56, but I would have expected that uh, to equal the odds of them matching this 44.55. So it's, it's, not, uh, it's not doing what I would think, right? So the difference, difference would be equal to this minus this. So it's a little bit more complicated than that, right? So that's why we did it this way to start off with, right? So I'm going to say percent and did it. And so that's a little bit unsatisfying. Let's make this. And so, so, so you might say, cause I'm as an accountant, I'd like to have that kind of double entry accounting system kind of double check. I would like to be able to calculate it both ways uh, and, and, and be able to be able to calculate the likelihood that none of them match, which would be this 55. And instead of just subtracting the hundred, I would like to also be able to calculate uh, the the number that that the likelihood that two would match and have the two of them add up to 100%. But that gets a little bit complicated. So now I could say, okay, well, it, I, if I have less confidence in this number that way, maybe I can kind of test it somewhat empirically with Excel and say, well, let me test it out and see what happens, right? So we could say, all right, let, let's, let's run a test. So I'm gonna select this D home tab and I'm gonna select the paintbrush and make a skinny eye. And let's say we have a count. Let's just run the dice. Let's say we have the red dice. Let's just do this will be easier equals the red and then the yellow and the green. Boom, boom, boom. And let's do it our good old 500 times. One, two, we'll just do it 500 times. It's been the random number we've been picking. So we'll just copy this down 500 times. Excel, sit down at this table for the next couple hours and roll these dice 500 times and tell us what your results are, okay? That's your job. And Excel's like, I can do it way faster than that. So I won't tell you, but I'm actually doing it way faster. Okay, so then we're gonna go to the home tab, font group, bracket, drop down, uh, black, and then white. And then we'll make a skinny column over here. And let's let's make it, let's uh, let's center these ones home tab alignment and center and then we're just going to do a random calculation between one and six for each die so equals random random between one and comma six so it's going to give me one two three four five or six representing the outcomes let's hit enter i'm going to put my cursor on that fill handle that to the right so there we have it and then I'll just double click on the fill handle, taking it down. Let's double check it by hitting control shift down arrow. Oh, hold on. It went too far. Let's go back up, put our cursor in. Control shift down. There, there it is. So it's going to recalculate every time, but that's okay. I'm going to keep it recalculating. If you don't want it to recalculate and you want a static example, you can copy this and then paste it back on top as a static example or put it as a static example over here. I'm gonna, we're gonna deal with it just recalculating for now. I'm gonna select these three. Let's double click to make them thinner. Put my cursor on the top row, control shift down and let's format this home tab, thought group. Let's put some brackets around it, bucket drop down, blue and there we have it. Okay, so now we so now we can we can take that information and say, all right, let's do our test to see what's the what's the how many times do none of these match? So what I would like to do is count the ones where these you know basically don't match, or count the ones you know where we have where we have uh, at least a match of two numbers. How in the world am I gonna do that? Now there's, you could like go through all of these and try to do a conditional formatting and say, it, are there's, is there uh, a duplicate value, you know, in there? And so there was a duplicate of a four. And then if I keep on, there's two fives, two twos, 
two fives, but that's tedious to do each time, right? So let me try to come up with a technique. I could say, all right, let's do a count, a count over here. And we're going to say, let's say this will be equal to, not there, here, equal to count if, and then, bra and then so we're going to take this range, those three numbers. Actually, let's take these two numbers, the second two, and then comma, uh, if there is an, one of those two numbers is equal to that number three. We want you to count it. And then also, I'm going to close this up. So what will that do? That means if this number is equal to this or that, that it's going to give me a result. But what it's not going to pick up, like if just these two numbers are equal. So if these last two numbers were equal. So what I'm going to do is also, I'm going to add to that also count if, and then brackets, if these two numbers, the first two numbers, comma, are equal to this number. So that will cover all of the bases that I'll get something above zero as long as there's at least a match between these two numbers. Because I said, take the last two and see if they match the first one. And if there is a match, you're going to give me a number, right? And then also take the first two. And if, if those match the first one, give me a number. All I'm looking for is a number greater than one because uh, if it's zero, that means that there's no match. If it's greater than one, there is some kind of match that is happening. So I'm gonna say, okay. So this one had no match right there. See, there's one, four, and five. If I double click on it, now I've got two ones. So it took this one, this, and saw that it matched those two and it gave me a one. This one has no matches. This one has no matches. This one has no matches. This one has two fours. So now it took uh, this number to calculate if it counts to those two and this number to calculate if it, if it ties to those two. I don't care that it's a two. I just care that it's greater than one, meaning there is a match. There's no matches there. There's two matches here. So this was the second half of the formula where it said, take this number and see if any of these two match that one. And it gave me a number, All right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy that down so it does it all the way down. So now everything that has a, a number in it should represent that there was a match. Everything that has a zero should represent that there's no match. No match here, no match here. There was a match here, six and six. No match here, no match here, no match here, no match here. There was a match here, three, three. There's no match here and so on. Okay, so that's gonna be, so that's it. So let's go ahead and say, this is gonna be home tab, font group, make this black, white, we'll center it, control shift down, brackets, make it blue. And then let's make this a little bit tighter. All right, so now that we have that, we could then say, okay, let's, let's compare the match, no match, and the total. So here's, let's, let's actually make a skinny O Let's make it the same skinny size. I need to take this I, home tab, clipboard, paintbrush, skinny O. I'm gonna take these and cut it and put it over here on Q, paste. That move, I just moved it. And then I'm going to sit, put the header formatting, home tab, font group, bucket, black, white, alignment, center. Let's do the same thing here. Uh, paintbrush that one over here. All right, and then so here's gonna be our count. So the ones that matched. So now I wanna do a count formula and say if anything, if it's as long as it's greater than zero, there was a match. So I don't wanna count all the numbers twos. I just wanna say count it as one if the number is not zero. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be count so let's do a, a, a count if brackets this range, control shift down. I'm going to say control backspace to go back up. If that range uh, has the criteria of being greater than one, or, I'm sorry, greater than zero. Now it's not going to like that if I hit enter because I put this sign in and that's a text for Excel. 
So I have to put quotes around the greater. And then it's still not going to like it until I put an and because when I have a text thing and tie it to something else, I have to put a not in it. I tie it together. That's what I think of it as with that and. So there it is. So that comes out to 230. That'll change every time. And then I'm going to calculate the not matches. Now I could say, well, there's 500 total, right? And that means just like we did before that this would be my plug from an accounting standpoint. That's my difference. But I don't want to do it that way. I'd wa I want to be able to calculate both of them to give me an internal control double check. So I want to count all the zeros then. How can I count all the zeros? Equals count if bracket, control shift down, control backspace, and then criteria. This I could just put a, if it's a zero. I don't need to do anything with the, with the quotes because it's just a number and enter. And then if I sum those up equals the sum, I should get my check figure of 500, which was the count that we had. So, okay, so how many rolls did we have? If we compare this to the number of rolls, 500, 500, that's gonna give us then the percent. So the percent then for the matches, it's gonna be 207, it's gonna keep changing, but 207 over 500. Let's percentify that. Go into the home tab number group, percentify to recognize and add some decimals dragging it to uh, the right. There that is. And let's sum it up over here. It should add up to 100% equals the sum. Boom. Of those two. Bam. Percentify to recognize. Home tap. Percentify. Boom. All right. So there we have it. Let's put some brackets around this. Home tab. Font group. Bracket. Bucket. Blue. And bordered it. All right. So what did we estimate it to be? Estimate. We estimated that it was going to be a percent of 44% and 55%. Uh, that's what we that's what we did in our estimate over here. So I can say home tab number group boom, boom, boom. That adds up, of course, to 100% equals the sum of those two. Bam, one percentified number group to recognize. Bam. And then I'm going to stop saying boom and bam. I will stop that. That's going to get annoying real fast, real fast. Okay. And then we'll subtract these two out to see the difference. I'm going to keep the difference in decimals so I can see a negative number on the, on the differences. So you can see it's pretty close, pretty close. All right. Okay. So, and I should see that hovering around flipping from positive to negative in somewhat of a random pattern, which could result in a long string of either positives or negatives. That's another uh, intuition is not exactly correct situation in terms of how that randomness will happen. But let's select these two home tab font group borders and brackets. So now even though I'm not really satisfied by double checking it this way, I double checked it kind of empirically and I can say ah, these numbers look like that is what's playing out uh, as I as I map it out. So now I'm going to say, okay, well, let's apply that same concept to the birthday situation. So if, if we take the birthday situation, let's just think about that same concept. We're going to take a skinny column and then say paintbrush. Let's put that here. And let's say we had our 50 people. So people, people, there's going to be 50 of them and we're looking at their birthdays. That's the criteria we want to see match, uh, match B day for 50 people. That's the idea. Let's make a skin. Let's make that black or bordered blue. I'm going to make a skinny W putting my cursor on the T home tab, paintbrush, make a skinny W W. And let's say we're going to have our, uh, people, P E O P L E, the days, uh, and then the total days, and then this will be the percent. So we're going to say the first person will be the same in that, just like the first dice roll, we're going to imagine we ask them like one at a time, right? And the and the and the first person 
it doesn't matter what their birthday is, whatever it is, if it's January 15th, then the second person that we ask, let's imagine we're going to start with 366 days in a year. We could say 365. We'll go 366 just to add the, 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 you know, the possibility of the 366. So let's say if, if it was out of 366 days in a year, we now have 366 for the second person, 366 minus one, that, that number of days, so 365 for person number two. And then we'll do this to three. So 365 out of 366. Again, we're saying 366 days in the year, okay? So then if the, so then the next person would be equal to 366 days. Uh, but now we have two people before that person that we asked. So minus, I'll say minus this number two up here, right? Minus the other two birthdays that have already been picked. Now, obviously, if those first two birthdays matched, then we've already have a situation where two birthdays match. But we're going to say minus those two. So then we're going to say, all right, the next one, if I bring this out to number four, is going to be equal to 366 days in a year, we're going to imagine, minus the three people that was before that fourth person means that they have 363 days left, which wouldn't match the people before it. All of these three are going to be out of a total number of days of, of course, 365. So let's copy that across. I'm going to say this is going to go all the way out to 50 people. So we'll copy this out to 50, 50 people, boom. Now I'm going to copy these across. Now this bottom number, I just have a hard-coded number. So one way to easy way to copy it across is I can say this equals the one before it. So this equals the one before it. And now I can select these two and I should be able to copy these across and the relative cell references should work. So if I go all the way to the right, boom. So 317 minus the one before it. I think that's correct. And this over the 366, okay. Let's make the header column black and white, as is our custom. Selecting these ones, I'm going to go all the way to the right and make that black and white. And then I'm going to go over here and make these ones black and white. Home tab font group, black and white. And then let's divide them all out. So the first one has a ratio of 365 over 366. If we percentify to recognize, home tab percentify, and then adding some decimals, boom, we can grab that one on the fill handle, grab that fill handle, drag it to the right, drag it to the right, boom. All right, I'm gonna stop saying boom. I'm not gonna say boom anymore. It's gonna get annoying real fast if I keep. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna then select the BU column all the way over to BU. That's what you gotta do, BU, man. That's what all the youngsters say these days. You gotta be you, just be you, man whatever that is i don't even know i don't even i don't know who i am how am i gonna be me i don't even know let's select all of these and border blue those home tab font group border blue okay so there we have it so let's go to the end of it now and so now we're gonna say the total the same concept as we did with the dice the total is going to be equal to the product multiplying all of them together i'm going to put my cursor here just like we say control shift down i could say control shift to the left and then shift back one not to pick up that last one and enter now i'm going to get this massive number i'm going to hold down control and scroll down a bit that's difficult to work with right i could copy that down and this is what we're going to do we're going to get this giant copy that down fraction and then I can take the numerator over the denominator, percentify that number, percentify, boom, boom. And so there we have it. But it might be easier not to have those massive numbers. So instead I can say, let's go and, and uh, undo that, undo that, undo, 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 undo. And then I'm just gonna do it this way and say, let's say, that that let's just do it down let's just do it here this will equal the product of the top bit control shift to to the left 
shift back to the right divided by, so you can see my formula bar up here. If I hit the arrow, it's gonna go back to where I started. So now I'm back over here. There's my formula. And then control shift to the right. I'm sorry, to do the product. Let's put a uh, brackets around that divided by the product tab of control shift to the left, shift back to the right. And then if I go back on over, there is our formula. So we, we basically said multiply all the top part and then divide it by the bottom part so that we just get the end result, which will be a little bit tighter of a number. It's gonna close up that last bit. So let's go ahead and say home tab, number group, percentify to recognize, adding some decimals. And then let's sum, do the same thing here. I could take equals the product of these numbers, control shift left, shift back to the right. I should get to the same number. That's our double check. Number, percentify, adding some decimals. There is that. So we have only a 2.99% chance that none of the birthdays match, which is pretty low. And just like we did with the dice, if I say less 100% or one and percentify to recognize, then that's gonna give us the, the likelihood of a match, which is gonna be equal to 100% minus the 2.99 and number group percentify, add some decimals, there it is. So 97.01% uh, of a match, which of course is quite high if you have 50 people. So if you have 50 people, you can be pre pretty sure that there's gonna be a match and that's kind of counterintuitive and that's gonna be kind of like the magic trick, right? So we can basically double check this now and say, could I test that out like empirically? How could I kind of uh, check that out? So let's go ahead and go here and go black, white, and then let's select all of this and make it blue all the way to like here, borders and blue, just so we have the formatting now. Because I'd like to be able, again, I'd like to be able to match it doing it the other way, and, and but, but I can't really do that just like with the dice. So I could say, well, how can I build something to kind of test to test this out, to make sure it's working. So let's make a skinny AW here. I won't format paint it because that'd be a little tedious. I'm gonna select this. And then we, we have the we have the what we mapped out over here. I can see it in the example tab. So let me just check out what we did. So first, if we were trying to, to get all of the days in the year, we can number all of the days in the year. So what would that look like? So if I said, these are the dates, and then I'm gonna put them as a, num a day number, an absolute day number. So in other words, when we have the days in the year, it starts at one, one. I can make that into a home tab number group, making that a date. I'm gonna make it a short date and let's make it the year 2024, right? And then I can say, if I copy that down, going to bring me to the next day and so on and so forth. So if I copy that all the way down to the uh, 1231, that's how we count the days in the year. 1231. Okay, let's make this a little wider. A little wider. Okay. And then I'm just gonna number the days. So one, one, January 1st is gonna be one, two, and then we'll copy that down. So these will be the absolute days for each day of the year instead of starting over for each month, right? We're just gonna say, this is numbering the days one through 365 or, or whatever it comes out to depending on the year, one through uh, the 366 in this case, 2024. So let's cop, let's take all of this and put our borders around it. So we'll make that border blue back up top. Let's make this uh, black and white home tab font group, black, white, and center it. Let's center this. Why is there a three there? Day, that was supposed to be a number, but I didn't get the shift. And then let's double click, make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so once we have that, 
we could then say, all right, let's map this out on like a table and test it out for a, for a few times and see what happens. So I'm gonna make a skinny BZ. I'll put my cursor here, home tab, paintbrush, make a skinny BZ. And I'm gonna say that, let's see what we want to do. Let's say the count. So the count is gonna be the number of people. So one, two, I'm gonna copy that down to 50. 50 people, that's how many people that we have in a room in our test cases to see if they have a matching birthday. And let's say that we're gonna do this how many times? One, two, three, let's gonna, let's do it like 35 times. Bring it out to like 35 times that we'll run this scenario just for our test. Let's go ahead and make that black, white. Let's make this column black and white too. So I'll make that black and white. And then let's do our random sample. So now we're gonna say equals random uh, random between days of one through 366. And we'll say, okay. <clears throat> and then I can copy that down this way and say, boom. So there we have it copied down. And then I can also copy it out this way. I'm gonna put my cursor here and copy it out. Now I'm gonna go all the way out. I'm gonna go too far because I can always delete if I went too far, go back up and delete this last column, right click, <clears throat> trim that off. Let's make it a little smaller. I'm gonna select all of these columns and go up top and double click, toot toot, making it a little smaller. Okay, so that looks somewhat, now how can I tell if there's matches? Well, what, one way we can just look at it and be able to tell is I can select each column and say, okay, Let's take this column and go home tab styles conditional formatting and say are there any duplicates duplicate values it's going to make them red boom we have duplicate values here so there they are let's take the next one i'll just take this one and do the same same uh thing I could say give me tell me if there are any duplicate values so there, there are duplicates here. And maybe I wanna make that second one. Uh, maybe I undo that one and I make it green just to, say, to show it's a different column. So let's make duplicate values, but let's make them green. All right, so there's our duplicate values in there. So that one, so you would expect all of them to have basically duplicate values. We might not do all of them, but just let's say, duh, duh, give me the duplicate values. So those has duplicates and do this one duplicate birthdays this will be du, du, duplicate values and let's make this one uh green fill boom so there's duplicates there let's take this column and go okay are there duplicate values du, du, duplicate values and make these uh i already did that one now oh wait a sec no, I didn't do it again. Duplicate values, boom. Now, what if I took these two and I format painted it, taking these two and I format paint that here. So it looks like I can do the, the, the format paint thing and it should still work. So I'll take those and I'll try to format paint that all the way across and see if that will do as we would expect and so uh so no because it's it's looking for duplicates across the whole thing so no that don't work but if i just took these two and i did two at a time and i said give me duplicates over here does that work so here's the 330, here's the 330, here's the these two, that looks like it's working. So I could do like two at a time. Duplicate, I think that works. So the 228, 150, 228, 345, 345, okay. 288, 288, 303, 100, 100, and 100. So I could do, okay, let's duplicate that here. 
duplicate that here, do that here, and do, 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 do that here, uh, do that here, 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 do that here. So I think that works. Uh, but so notice it's 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 not as nice to be able to kind of to test it out exactly, but you can see that every column here has duplicates uh, that we've tested out if we've if we if we've got that all correct. Hopefully that's all correct. We did that fairly quickly. So out of 35, you can see that they all have every column has colors in it. Well, this one has a lot. Uh, 101, 101, 90, 90. Yeah. So they all, so which would give us some indication that it looks like out of the 35, we would expect basically all of them, right? It's it's 97 percent likelihood we'll have at least one of the duplicate matches. So we can kind of empirically test that way. Let's select all of this and just make it blue because that's kind of like our custom and bordered. Just to wrap this up, blue and or border blue and then the colors are on top maybe it shouldn't be colored it stands out better if it's not colored okay and then we'll we'll review it and then let's spell check it matching matching that's not bad okay so that's the general idea